tend to hold my brush really tightly, pretty much the way I hold a pencil or a pen. I have heard some people say that this is not the right way to hold a brush, that you should hold it more loosely or towards the back end of the brush or so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. I really believe that there is no right or wrong way to make art. It's the final result that matters, not how you got there. Um, yes, I, for Luco in this kind of character, I do really want a tight, controlled line, and so I tend to really grip that brush. And as you can see in that little spiral right there, it works fairly well. Um, I managed to get that all in one stroke and don't have to go back and try to jiggle things in. Uh, if I do a demonstration for inking a character like Tamino, uh, you'll see that the brush is much looser. I tend to not, I may hold it the same way, but I'm trying to let the bristles and the ink do a little bit more of the work. Here, though, I want a kind of classic comic slash animation style, and for that, I really do need to have that death grip on the ferrule of the brush. Another thing I'm probably doing wrong is that I use the same brush to ink everything. Um, I think that most pros use a variety of brushes, thinner and thicker, depending on what lines they're doing in the drawing, and or dip pens. I do use dip pens, but I tend to use them only for backgrounds. I've never taken a class in this. I pretty much just looked at lines and tried to figure out how to make the brush work. Not the best way of learning to do things, but there you go. And because of this, I probably missed out on a lot of tips and tricks, such as using different size brushes to get different size lines. The series uh, four, or the number four sapphire, tends to give me a pretty good variance from very thin to reasonably thick. And of course, I can make up the thickness with more than one brush stroke. And if I am really using my arm and not just my wrist, which I'm probably doing right here, then it'll flow a lot easier and the lines will be a lot smoother. Speaking of tips and tricks, one of the tips that I found out through trial and error is if you get a kind of crappy ink, meaning that it's not as black as you'd like it to be or it looks more like a wash instead of a thick black, leave the jar open for a couple of days um, preferably somewhere you're not going to knock it over. I've had this problem. But what happens is the excess water in the ink tends to evaporate out and it'll thicken up your ink and darken it. Um, this will happen naturally over the life of the ink as you're using the bottle and opening it and closing it anyway. And you'll find that unless you do a lot of inking, probably what will happen is before you get to the bottom of the bottle, your ink has turned into something that looks kind of like pudding and smells like a combination between fish and battery acid. Um, ink can go bad in that it can spoil and it does have that nasty smell. And once you get down to that consistency of something almost like pudding, you'll find that you'll have to dip your brush a lot more often and the lines will tend to give you a lot more of a sort of a lumpy quality. It'll be a lot harder to do thinner lines. So go ahead and, and just chuck it. It's Ink's not that expensive, and currently it's still easy to find. Please stay easy to find. And so it's not worth trying to make your ink do what it once did and no longer can do because it's gotten too thick and gloppy. Another thing you can get is this nifty goop that's called Brush Tip Shaper. And what it is is it's, it's like a goop. Again, it's sort of like a pudding, really. Uh, and all it does is it allows you to dip the brush into it and then shape it. I usually just twirl it against my palm when you've washed the brush out. And what this does is it'll eventually harden and it's very much like that stuff you'll find was on the brush when you first bought it. And it will really keep that point. It'll keep hairs from sticking out and will keep the tip sharp. And when you go to need, use the brush, all you have to do is sort of break it against your palm or a piece of paper and that stuff will just flake out. And a couple of swipes with ink against paper and you're back in business.
speaking of tips, um, something you can't see because it's going on off camera is every time I dip my brush, I will wipe it against a piece of paper to get rid of the extra ink that's probably collected at the bottom of the tip and keeps me from getting a really sharp line. Something else I also do is I will twirl the bristles in the ink so that it'll resharpen the point. Otherwise, I'll put the brush down and get a line thicker than I wanted it to be. Something else I used to do when I was learning is before actually inking a drawing, I would start off by just inking random lines on another sheet of paper, usually about a hundred lines or so, just to get myself into the feeling of inking into the process. Loosens myself up a little bit and really focused my attention on what I was doing. I don't do it anymore. I don't think I really need to, although I have bad inking days, but it was something that helped me feel whether I was in the right mood or ready to ink a particular drawing or not. And of course, since ink is pretty permanent and a lot harder to correct, it's better to know than not to know. And three, two, one, stick your hand in the ink. Oh, there we go. There's the smudge. Thank you, low res camera, because you can't even see it. But trust me, it's there. That's why my hand jerked away. Well, this is pretty much it. The last detail to go in here is Luco's other eyebrow. I hope this was of some use to folks, and if there's any interest, I'd be happy to do more. I'd like to do one of Tamino, which is a character that's much more loosely inked to show a different style of inking. But this is pretty much how I do all my work. From here, I'll scan it and then bring it into Illustrator, where I'll convert the image to a vector and then color it from underneath. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you liked it.